meant to address the in art is meant art art is meant to address the fundamental injustices in life an artist. It wasn't my first choice. I still don't really feel that it's that remarkable. I'm always surprised when people are interested because it's such a natural part of my existence that I, I, I see other people shopping for groceries and doing the mundane things, that it, going to the post office and doing all the mundane things that they have to do and it just seems to me that, gee, can everybody do this? I'm just the one who decides to take out the time to do it. You gotta dance to it, man. Like that. You do. You know what to do, I wish I was in there, man. I'm the tortured soul. I'm the fucking tortured soul, dude. <laughs> the artist must dance by himself. I live in hell. The noir angle. I like the noir part. Los Angeles is my desk. We have the story of an LA artist who's trying to make it in the city's competitive art scene. And another candidate for the White House throws his paw into the ring. So, what are we gonna do? Tasting non-alcoholic Lucy. The opening's gonna be next Saturday. All y'all out there, you can go to my website, housegangart.com, and all that information will be there. Blah, blah, blah. Last time we were talking about the direction of art and the whole genre of, what's it called now, pop surrealism? Yeah, the pop surrealism. I personally don't like that. What do you prefer? Well, I like cartoon surrealism, because I think the work is a lot more cartoon-oriented than it is pop. You don't like the term lowbrow? Lowbrow's been kicked around for a long time, and I think my main complaint with it is that it's reactionary. I think it should be able to stand on its own without having to be defined in opposition to highbrow art. My use of cartoon characters is an attempt to explain the human condition without resorting to the hammer on the head use of we the people. I consider the development of cartoon characters the same way that I regard human evolution. To me, it was cartoon cats such as Felix that first morphed themselves up on their hind legs and began to act like humans. Uh, she just went insane and started blaming me for everything that was wrong in her life, and uh, it was it was pretty weird. But anyway, hey man, so uh, you got any any uh, any interest in either of the paintings? Not right now. Shit. Look, the show's got to come down, mm -hmm. and we haven't sold anything yet. You know, we've only got a few days left. You make better money than working at Taco Bell, but it beats working at Taco Bell. For me, the long and short of it is I don't have to go to some gig where I punch a clock or, or you know, I have to make meetings and meet with some asshole boss that 
gives me these ridiculous fucking, uh, you know, expectations. So, yeah, you know, you eat shit, you know, in order to do what you want to do. Well, they're good paintings. I know they're good paintings. Is that the point? Uh, there's a guy who was at... Oh, yeah, that guy again. We've been talking about him. Yeah. Yeah, he expressed interest in the painting. The round one? Yeah, the round one. So, you know, but he also, he also expressed interest in a discount, so... Discount? I'll leave that up to you. What? A discount? I'll handle the money, man. Mm-hmm. What's going on? We gotta make a buck here. You gotta charge more. You artists don't know anything about business. I gotta make a buck. You gotta make a buck. This is art, but it's also the business of art. The new stuff's coming out. There's computers, everything going on. So, uh, you know, check out some of these young kids coming out of art school. Yeah, I'm sure, man. All right, I'll call you later. Hans, we are in great danger. <laughs> Hans, the fucking SS dropped off a load of fucking medals. That's all. No food, no nothing. Medals. It's that Hogan. <laughs> it's that Hogan again. Now, when Lowbrow first started out, most of us were hot rod, tattoo guys, and we didn't fit into that other scene, so we made our own scene, and this is where we came from, and this is what we did. And then this scene kind of grew up in a grew up around us, we were like the first trees in the forest, so to speak. I remember first meeting Osgang in like 82. Every piece of art needs a title. If you don't have a title on it, it's like not using a particular color. This entire car I called Ninth Life. 83, he was kicking around this underground art scene, and we were just, both came from this um, cartooning background, and that's just what we liked and what we did, and it, it, it wasn't any kind of viable alternative. There wasn't anything that even be, even thought about. I mean, nowadays, it's like a genre you can pick. You know, I'm surprised they don't offer classes in it yet at, at uh, you know, art center and shit. But for the most part, it was just something we just hadn't be doing. Modern art is much bigger than putting it just on the visual arts. Music is art, cinema is art, theater is art, whatever we see in the streets is art. This last show wasn't the first time you exhibited in New York, was it? No, I shouldn't have before. Best Cutler Gallery in West, on West Broadway. Good times, man. I was hanging out with that guy from The Factory. It's always New York, and I, I think, you know, I think that's real. I mean, I think New York is really the center of where art is happening in, in America right now. At this point, you consider yourself a California artist? The cool thing that happened in, in Los Angeles and in California with this kind of art is that uh, we were sort of allowed to flourish for a long time without getting a lot of real attention. There were enough galleries and collectors, and you know, a while, after a while there was Juxtapose Magazine, and we were able to spend like 10 years, Anthony and I, spend 10 years like, you know, refining our work and working on it, where I think if this had happened in New York, I always feel like there would have been like one or two, three people that would have been picked out to be the stars, and then two of them would have OD'd, and it would have all been over in like three years. But I think California was kind of under the fine art radar, and we were kind of able to get something going through through time without without having like the, the, the white hot spotlight of attention on us, which is maybe bad, but maybe kind of good. You know, it was, I think it's kind of beneficial. <laughs> Here's the deal with uh, New York. They hate California and they're snobs. It's just like the French did not want to have anything to do with California wine for a while until we eventually outclassed them. It's the same with New York. New York, New York art's dead. And the only way they can hang on their positions is, you know, being snobs about it, not letting the, uh, the other kids come into play. Where does it come from? It's hard to say that it's an art movement. It's just uh, an aggregate of uh, disenfranchised artists that stick together. And now they're that uh, spontaneously uh, were drawn to each other. For me, it was a whole sort of scene surrounding this. I feel very much like I was involved 
in something equivalent to Paris of the 20s, you know, or, you know, Paris of the 1890s, Montmartre, or the Andy Warhol's factory of the 60s, or my very favorite period, Berlin of the 20s and early 30s before the Nazis, you know. circles tend to be twisty uh, and, and sort of um, non-linear. There's certain non-linearity to them as far as the, uh, the way it captures several moments in time. Skanks use a computer to really work for him. Personally, I don't like it at all for me. You know, if I draw something, I want it. I want to draw. If I, I like drawing. Getting out of my imagination, what I want on paper with a pencil works just fine for me. But for what Oskane's doing and making it all swirly and. and uh... But the thing is, it also the computer also expands one's choices. It doesn't narrow things down by any means. For example, here you go. What the fuck? I've got this this thing. This this drawing, it's ready to go, it's ready to be transferred to the canvas, it's ready to become a painting. tripod here this morning. Kyle jacking off again. <laughs> I keep this hidden. This is very important. Have you seen his white cat? Hey, it was that white cat. It's an Olivia original, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really good one. I'm not so into the whole cartoon. I'm an abstract painter. I think abstract painting is, um, like a lot of people hate it, but, and it can be really, really bad, but it's a different, it's a different type of thinking. What was that question? Do they always look the same from the computer to the canvas? No, like for example, on this hand, when I finally did this painting, I did a completely different hand. It didn't work. It started to look improper in the painting. It like looks good as a line drawing. It's fine. But when I actually got it's to right. painting this... So I'm going to have to redraw this. And that transference from a line drawing to a painting, there's a, that's, that's, a, that's a big step. And there's things that work and, and don't work. He's definitely got a drug orientation to him that it really uh, it works together well. There's other artists out there that... Uh, uh, you can see they're working with Photoshop and they just take something standard, a standard photo, alter it in Photoshop and then paint it. You know, whereas like Oskane's just look like 
trippy Oscar paintings, you know what I mean? He has to explain you what he did, and they still look like his shit, you know? So, he's one of the few that I've seen that, that working with a computer where it really works for him. I just, these are my sketchbooks, and I, and I tend to fuck around in these. These to me are like, you know, doing a painting is a situation where I'm involved in something that's gonna be shown, it's gonna be sold, hopefully. I have a real responsibility to get it done. I don't, nobody, I don't give a fuck what I put in here. This is where it's, this is where I'm free. I did this back in uh, 1978. These really quick ones, is, I call them the Spotlight series because basically it's the character, a spotlight, and everything else is black, so it's an easy way to get a video. So, um, who is your favorite artist in the genre that you work in? Well, right now, um, actually, uh, Robert Williams is, is my favorite artist. The guy um, taught me a lot about painting, he taught me a lot about the art business, and uh, taught me about how to actually act as an artist. <laughs> gang painting from his ATM show at the Onyx Cafe. Apparently he had a girlfriend who came to one of his art shows and stabbed a cow's heart through one of his paintings on the wall. A dripping bloody cow's heart. And uh, so I believe this painting refers to that event. I think it's really about feminine power. <laughs>
Robert Williams has pointed out that fine art begins with women's asses, and that the accurate rendering of same is often rewarded with accolade. On a more esoteric tip, I maintain that the history of Western painting revolves around depicting crucial moments in collective or personal destiny. That is why we see a painting of George Washington crossing the Delaware, not eating its cornflakes that morning. The painter has to decide what crucial moment is going to be depicted. And in my, the way I see it, it's a very animated sense, this crucial moment has frames, if you will, leading up to it and frames coming away from it. And the crucial moment is a single frame. And I try and overlap that single frame with these previous frames. So here we have the, the moment of the crucial moment. And I'll try and bring in a little bit of that cornflake breakfast somehow in there. This one is coming up pretty well. It's, a, it's, it's something I gotta do to get X number of paintings done for this show. The one in San Francisco? Yeah. It's gonna be a solo show? No, I mean this guy Van Arno. Oh, okay. okay. Which I think will be a pretty good juxtaposition. He's taking exactly the opposite approach that I do. You know, I I have this whole idea that the human figure has been used in art for so long that I don't want to use it anymore. That's why I paint cats. But Van is a traditionalist in terms yeah. of he's, he's all about the human figure. So, what does it mean? It means that I'm sick and tired of uh, the use of the human figure in art, and I've decided to use cats instead. Why cats? I don't have an answer. <laughs> I don't know. Here is a reproduction of one of the first images received on a television screen. Compare that picture with these of today, and you can judge for yourself how far along the road to perfection television has traveled. Darling, I don't care about this silly war. When my uh, family first moved to America in the early 1960s, they didn't have a TV. They never had a TV before. I want to love you. Live in a little house in the <laughs> The American TV was uh, fundamentally wrong, and I was denied that whole experience. Yeah, my, my parents were from Europe. Well, I was figuring out life, and they were figuring out American culture at the same time. Anyway, so that's a story, you know, a big deal. It's an immigrant story. I'm very lucky, very lucky to be brought up that way, man. Because I'm going to be an artist. Yeah, you know how they fucking love skanks, man. Oh, I, I, I think they fucking bloody suck, you know that? I think they suck. <laughs> I like it, Jay. I'd like to thank <laughs> you. I'm so full of love. <laughs> I'm so full of shit. <laughs> Famous art? What do you want? Famous? I'm not gonna. Don't you are the famous LA artist. The LA art community is a tough area for a newcomer to break into. News 13's Sylvia Lopez shows us what it takes to make it in the local art scene. 28 year old Anthony Osgang is not your typical struggling artist. For one thing, he eats well. He's got a regular art related job. He has some pieces on display at the County Art Museum, and he just sold a painting. But he'd like to sell more. I've always felt that money is actually the most sincere form of flattery. For somebody to be willing to buy your work is a great compliment to me. Osgang calls his style of art cartoon mayhem, but thousands of L.A. artists would probably use that term to describe their lifestyle given the hardship involved in becoming a well-known artist. Osgang has taken to painting movie set graffiti to supplement his income, he says it's not exactly an artist's dream, but in this town, it's money. Still ahead on News 13, the Rudolph Hess story doesn't end yet. We will tell you about it when we come back. Why did you decide to show my work at your gallery? Because you get so many artists coming to you with their portfolios and uh -huh. people coming all the time. Why, why did you decide that you even wanted to deal art? As an art dealer, you get submissions every day from people wanting to show their art. 
Low brow. Low brow. <laughs> I'd like to stick with people whose art that I bought myself in the past. I'm not really showing up for the money or you know trying to pick artists that particularly sell a lot. I'm trying to pick artists that I really like. Anthony knows what he's doing, and he's got his direction. He's been doing it for a hell of a long time. I think he's going to go to Bar Sinister. Oh, really? We're alternative artists, and yet there exists an alternative support network. People buying art, and there are a few galleries. And that's interesting, what you're, what you're saying, is it gave the movement time to mature. It was a great scene because there was a lot of help between, you know, like every break I ever got as an artist came from other artists. From people like Anthony and a bunch of other people saying, hey, this guy's work is good. You should, hey, you gallery guy, you should look at Van Arno. He's great. Yeah, the whole show isn't going to take very much space. How many pieces are you taking? Ten. How big's the gallery? Pretty good size, man. Van's got ten. I, I like to paint, to paint the archetypical moment that Anthony talks about and that clowns talk about. But uh, I like to do it with a much more traditional sort of a figurative fine art painting sort of thing. And, but there's a cartoon influence in my work too. The shooting gallery? It's going to be crazy, man. I hope. It's a different market, you know? It's more street culture. cash in my pocket, well, no, going there knowing I wanted to buy uh, an Osgang. I think I actually have four or five of Anthony's paintings now. Yeah, so he was, he was the first artist I ever bought art from. 20 bucks each. Who's the band, man? Who cares? So how do you, I don't know how you want to cut it, 50-50 or? Sounds good to me. It's okay with you? Oh yeah, man, yeah, 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 of course. Because that way people want to buy both of them. <laughs> now that I'm an art gallery owner, it's an investment for me, but it's still uh, just uh, a get. For me, it's like getting a fix. Lowbrow, it has to do with hot rods and pinup chicks. Other than that, I don't think it's lowbrow. And I'm not really too happy with the term lowbrow to begin with because I know what highbrow means, so that. You know, therefore, I know what lowbrow insinuates, and I'm not, I don't think that's the case at all. I just show what I like and what I think I can sell. Yeah. I was smoking, bro. Yeah, it's smoking with the one double day. Right. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be crazy. crazy. I hope. I mean, we, we come, come right, right down, down to it. Really, really I'm trying, trying to make, make some, some money. money. I don't, have any, I don't have any deep philosophical reasons about why I do the fucking artwork. I do them because that's what people want me to do and that's what keeps me from occupied with me. Yeah, okay, the message, blah, blah, blah. The human condition as put forth in non-human terms would be. That's the message. Yeah. Shit, it's shit, it's shit. Sell them and make the money. You can make more. You can even paint the same one again if you, if you miss it so fucking bad. 
I was thinking about when I was just happy to have a show, that was enough, and I had no expectations of selling. I was just gratified to be in a show, and now I'm at this point where a show is about making money. Sherry, what's that? Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> this is KRK. This is KRK. Okay. Right. You're a painter also? Yeah, yeah. My brother, you probably know my brother, Mark Wright. Yeah, he's my little brother. <laughs> He had this big, huge show in uh, Pasadena at the uh, California yeah, Museum. Yeah, make it. You, got, you were there, right? Yeah, it was an unveiling. That was the cool thing about it, this unveiling is big, massive. He just unveiled a painting for $500,000. Holy moly. It's, a, it's a, the Pasadena Art Center. Uh, yeah, the Pasadena Art Center. And, he, and once upon a time when paintings, before TV and film paintings, when would have these extravagant debuts, they would actually set up, up on an auditorium on the stage. People would pay to sit in the audience, and then they'd have this slow unveiling. Okay, well, I'm gonna go inside. This is how it's gonna go. But I want to say hi. Thank you, everybody, for writing. It's great. So, tell me what you're doing now. I just came off a show in San Francisco the shooting gallery and that was pretty successful I've sold three paintings of that show so far nice one of them was to a big executive at Warner Brothers and that was pretty surprising see see kids there is money in art there can be money but the thing is I do have to split the take with the dealer of course it's 50-50 yeah. they deserve it actually I think since they have to have space right and they, they have rent to pay and everything else mm -hmm. it's true do most artists have um, a good relationship with galleries that art just wasn't, you know, in the L.A. County Museum, you know, that it was... You know, art is everywhere. Art's everywhere. It's not just what you see on the wall. It's the way that you, you come, the way that you act. It's the style at which pe that people bring to completing a task. I mean, you can say that there's a, a car mechanic who's an artist, and he's an artist because he's using something creative to try and figure out how to fix it. Or if you work at Subway, then you're a sandwich artist. <laughs> Art, though, is a le to me is like sort of levels of playing field. When I was in New York, I was talking to people that I would never, ever have talked to or dealt with. Being an artist gives one a passport into different, different le levels of society, you know? Go hang out with the rich art collectors and then go hang out with the fucking dick in the dirt homeboys, right? You're not allowed to be here. Quiet. The homeboys are here. Are you the gentleman who, who got shot? Shit. 
god. That's, that's the hole right there. Yeah. It's like you're meant to be on this earth. Okay? It's like it's like that far away from my spine. The innocence is evaporated to a certain degree. But anyway, so yeah, I'm not sure that, that cartoons are the modern fairy tales anymore. I think they were in, when, in the 50s and 60s. But morality's changed, and when morality changes, everything changes. can change the world? Yeah, I think it can change certain ideas. I don't think this this art is uh, changing the world, though. But as I've gotten older, I've realized there are things that have nothing to do with art. There are people who have, people who have nothing to do with art. Art is not universal. Art is a specialty field, man. Museums strive to be the secular equivalent of churches. I think that's true. Yeah, it's a fine arbiter of taste. It's getting going all of a sudden, yeah. We, a new book came out, Weirdo Deluxe. Well, its roots are from uh, comic books, right. uh, B-movies, right. skateboarding, hot rodding. All the arts that really haven't been f uh, formally accepted in, uh, by the academic art world. Oz Gang, me, Williams, we've been around a long time. We actually, like, you know, we started out and really helped build this market. So is this done by computer or do you actually paint this? Is it done by computer or? Uh, I take my line drawing. You get a lot of respect when you break new ground, you know, and you get to do what you want to do, but you got to be ready when you get passed by. Sure, you worry about one day there's gonna be a knock on the door and you know, the game's up. You're gonna get a letter delivered and you know, you're out of here, pal. Oz Gang right now is in his Melty Cats period and it's working for him right now, but if, uh, you know, and everybody likes those, but you know, there's probably a few more as he gets up and he just doesn't want to do any more cats, you know? Anthony Oz Gang is an artist whose paintings have really hung in galleries all over the world. So now the question is, that was even here. Well, can tell you, it's working described as colorful, cartoony, and even lowbrow. Anthony, join us. Thanks a lot for having me. It's great to be here. Cats' history parallels human history. Cats have been alongside of humans for a long time. In the ritual dances of Bali, actors would wear stylized masks, anthropomorphic gods. And in ancient Egypt, cats were primetime players. Uh, look at the Sphinx. It's a, one of the seven wonders of the world, and it's a cat. Nowadays, since it is kind of acceptable and it is a genre, it has become commodified. And, and Do you have a copy of the book that they're signing outside? It's sold out. They're sold out. Artists that are coming on now are very successful. They're very good at marketing themselves. No pain same things over and over and over and they'll have a genre, you know, you stick to one thing, you nail it down, you hammer on it, you know. You don't, you don't think that Van and Oz Gang have sort of cultivated, you know, kind of mythologies about themselves and the Piz especially? Oh God, is that thing on? I mean, they've cultivated these sexy, you know, mythologies about themselves. That translates to, you know, kind of a sexual appeal. It's the whole package. It's the cult of personality. That's very much what I feel very fortunate if I've done nothing else in my whole life that I got to be a footnote, perhaps, to this movement that definitely is going to be in the art history books. Oh, God bless Stacy. She's, she's a wonderful person. Uh, I hope she's right, but I don't believe it. Well, that's a funny thing, because Williams doesn't, he, he, the computer is too old Satan, I can't, he, he, he I don't know if he even has a fax machine. Then. 
heavy dexterous. Yep. Fame is a fleeting thing. I'm just trying to depict what's going on in this. Our lives are so much other okay, other than routine, everything can get so weird and and bizarre that I don't think I really have a theme going through other than that what we're talking about, that one particular moment where everything's summed up. This is the moment. This is the whole fucking moment. All the narrative has been leading up to this moment, and all the narrative is going to lead away from it. I think they call it Shakespearean, isn't it?